Okay, so I've gotten my hands on the new base model M4 MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM with the nano texture upgrade. And over the last few days, I've been incredibly impressed with how snappy this computer is. There's a lot more here that might warrant people to upgrade than I initially thought. Also, I know there's not a lot of videos covering the cheapest MacBook Pro, so I'll do my best to make this single video as comprehensive and useful as possible for everyone whose budget only goes as far as M4 and not the M4 Pro or M4 Max chip. So that means we'll be diving deep into my thoughts on the design and new display, my in-depth experience with this performance. We'll touch on some other big updates on the computer and I'll finish off with a buyer's guide to help you figure out what upgrades are worth paying for if you want to purchase this computer. Starting off with the design, Apple sent over the 14 inch MacBook Pro in space black and this thing looks super sleek. It's actually darker than I expected, so much so that I might have to reconsider silver as my favorite MacBook color. One of the best things about this 14 inch model is how much power and tech you get in such a compact body. While it's not as thin as the MacBook Air, it's really close to being an ultra portable powerhouse. It's noticeably lighter and more manageable than a 16 inch MacBook Pro, making it ideal for those who want high performance without the extra bulk. If you go for the M4 version, you'll get three Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI port, an SD card slot, a headphone jack, and of course, a MagSafe port. The higher end M4 Pro and M4 Max models come with Thunderbolt 5 ports, but honestly, Thunderbolt 4 offers plenty of speed for most people. Unless you're doing very specialized work, that's not a trade-off to be overly concerned about. Now let's talk about the display, which is where this model really shines. For an additional $150, you can upgrade to a nano texture display, which Apple says reduces glare and reflections in bright settings, whether you're inside or outside. And I can confirm, this actually works. The nano texture makes a huge difference, allowing for a clear viewing experience, even in challenging lighting conditions. Considering how often laptops get used in all sorts of environments, this nano texture option feels like a no-brainer. I know some might worry about losing a bit of display sharpness due to the texture. Yes, there is a very slight trade-off in pixel clarity, but it's minimal. Even as someone who's really particular about display quality, I don't notice it enough to make me upset about this upgrade. Plus, Apple includes a cleaning cloth specifically for this screen, which does help keep it free from fingerprints and smudges, which is nice. Overall, I can't see myself wanting a MacBook without this upgrade now. The nano texture display feels almost surreal in how effectively it cuts down on glare, and for some people, this feature alone might make upgrading worthwhile. If you're in the market for a new laptop and you can, you know, sell your old MacBook to offset the cost, this display alone might make the switch worth it in my opinion. Also, can we just point out the other design stuff that's perfect and high-end for this computer? The keyboard feels great and looks great. The same goes for the large trackpad. The overall durability of this computer is really good. You also get a high refresh rate, 120 hertz panel. When you consider all of this for the entry price of just $1599, design-wise, this computer is shaping up to be a steal. Okay, so now let's talk about the meat and potatoes of this review, the performance of the M4 chip, which is the real reason people are considering an upgrade. Before we keep going, I wanna tell you about my friends at Setapp, the official partner of today's video. Setapp is an app subscription service that gives you access to over 250 high quality Mac and iOS apps for a single monthly fee. It's perfect if you're looking to boost your productivity and hit new milestones without juggling individual licenses or paying for each app. Two of my favorite apps right now are CleanShot X and Bartender. CleanShot X is my go-to for capturing screenshots and screen recordings with tons of editing options. And Bartender is amazing for organizing your menu bar, keeping everything tidy and accessible. Perfect for anyone who likes a clean, streamlined setup. Setup also includes an AI-driven search feature that helps you find the right tools for any task. Just type in what you need, like converting a file, writing an article, or cleaning up your drive. The best part though is that you can try Setup for free for 30 days with my special trial link to see how these apps and others fit into your workflow. Click the link below to get started today. To set the stage, my model has the M4 chip with a 10 core CPU and 10 core GPU paired with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD. Right off the bat, I'll say that this setup handles day-to-day -day tasks with an absolute ease. It's unbelievably snappy for basic work and you'll notice this right away. This is backed up by my benchmark results as well. In Geekbench, the M4 delivers around a 66% boost in 
single core and doubled the performance in multi-core performance over the M1 chip, making everything from multitasking to handling heavier apps noticeably faster. Moving to Cinebench, the M4 shows about a 47% increase in single core and nearly 80% increase in multi-core performance over the M1. This makes a real difference in things like sustained workloads, video rendering, 3D applications. That's where you'll see smoother performance and faster processing. For graphics, the Geekbench Metal GPU test shows the M4's GPU is roughly twice as powerful as the M1's, so you can expect smoother experiences for things like video editing, 3D rendering, and even some gaming. I also went ahead and tested the Neural Engine benchmarks using Geekbench AI and found that the M4 has huge increases over M1 across every category, meaning that these computers should see much more improved AI performance on all kinds of AI-related tasks, which I think is good to know considering how much of a push Apple is trying to make right now with Apple Intelligence, which we'll talk about soon. And finally, my Blackmagic disk speed test shows the SSD is very fast, making loading and saving large files a breeze. I do want to clarify though that benchmarks are only part of the story. To see how this computer truly feels, I'll need more time to just use it with my typical workflow, like editing and the programs that I use daily. But I can say this for anybody that wants some kind of conclusion for performance today, because you're interested in buying this computer as soon as possible. For a base M4 chip, this computer feels feels very fast. I've said that many times already. I mean it without exaggeration. And I think it will surprise a lot of people with just how much you can accomplish on it without needing M4 Pro or M4 Max. I'm personally excited to see how it handles my demanding creative tasks over the next month or so, since I'm currently using an M3 Max like MacBook Pro that is basically maxed out. So contrasting the two experiences will be eye-opening for me. So be sure to subscribe if you're interested in a follow-up performance review that I hopefully will release in the next month or so. So there are a bunch of little updates worth pointing out in this computer that I wanted to put all into one section of the video. First, the battery in the M4 MacBook Pro is physically bigger than previous years. And according to the numbers from Apple, we should be seeing an extra one to two hours of longer battery life, which is awesome, especially considering the fact that I felt the battery life on the previous models were already really good. There's also a brand new 12 megapixel center stage camera that looks a bit better than previous generations, which is nice to see. We can move around in camera and the webcam will follow you. And it also enables the ability to do a desk view, which is kind of cool. These Macs also ship with some basic Apple intelligence features, including writing tools to leverage AI to adjust our wording, the ability to type to Siri. You can also use the cleanup tool and the photos app to remove unwanted objects and a bunch of other little things Things that are fun to mess around with on Mac OS. Okay, now let's talk about what I'd recommend in terms of upgrades if you are set on buying the M4 MacBook Pro. Out of the gate, I do think the base model M4 version with the 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage is a really good deal at $1599. Of course, this doesn't include nano texture or more headroom for storage and RAM, but I really do believe this computer configuration can go a long way for most people while still saving a ton of money. Really the big problem is that the upgrades from Apple are extremely expensive. For example, if I was to upgrade this, I would want to go for at least 24 gigs of RAM, which costs $200. That brings the cost of this computer to $1799, compared to the base model M4 Pro MacBook Pro, which is a substantially better chip in terms of graphics performance. That starts at $1999, which also comes with 24 gigs of RAM by default. I'd almost be tempted just to get the M4 Pro MacBook Pro base model if I really needed 24 gigs of RAM. RAM, as that $200 difference between both the M4 and M4 Pro is 100% worth the money in my opinion, especially if you are planning to keep this computer for a very long time. The same is true if I want more storage. It just costs $200 to go from 512 to one terabyte on the M4 MacBook Pro. So I just think at the end of the day, before you decide to purchase any upgrades for this computer, I think you really need to be committed to wanting to do work and, and do your stuff on M4 as all upgrades really do bring you close or at the cost of acquiring a much more capable M4 Pro chip in the MacBook. So if I was this person that was committed to M4, like that was the chip I wanted, I'd pay 150 for the nano texture upgrade, I'd get 24 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage, and I'd also pay for the $20 upgrade for the 96 watt power adapter, which would bring the computer to 2169. And I'd be pretty happy with this setup, I think. I think it's like the perfect sweet spot if you're committed to M4 and you wanna get the most out of this computer over the next like three to five years. And there you have it. That is my initial review of the M4 
or MacBook Pro. If you guys have a lot of questions still they want me to answer, drop them down below. I'll try my best to answer them in the comment section as well as in my future follow-up review that will hopefully come out in the next couple of weeks. That's what I'm kind of hoping for. Um, but subscribe if you're brand new so you don't miss that video and drop a like, comment, hashtag I made it if you finished the video. And I'll talk to all of you guys in the next one. Peace.